decided through dormitory discussions that my roommate Joseph McNeil and two other companions, Frank McCain and David Richmond, who also lived in the dormitories in September 1959. And the issue got started because we were discussing what we could do as young people to change or to end the laws of racial segregation in our society. After reading some books, we decided on the night of January 31st, 1960, we were going to vote on carrying out this idea. We wanted to have a sit-down demonstration, nonviolent demonstration, at the local F.W. Warworth lunch counter, which had a stand-up counter for, quote, colored people, non-white people, mm-hmm. to take out food with no sit-down counter. Plus, that we could not use the bathrooms there uh, or drink out the segregated water fountains in many places. Mm-hmm. So Joseph, Franklin, David, and myself, then known as Ezell Bear Jr., decided we were going to take some action. What? It was by design that we came to this place. We wanted a place where there was really a dichotomy of offering and treatment and respect to people simply based on their color. The date was February 1st, 1960. The four teenagers, freshmen at a local university, entered Woolworths and began shopping for school supplies. It was a calculated move, meant to point out the hypocrisy of a store which would accept their money at the checkout but not at the lunch counter. Receipts in hand, two by two, they approached the forbidden stools. All around this room, the bottom lips of the patrons were dropping, and people were just absolutely standing and staring and looking as though they were fixed in time. McCain expected to be cracked over the head, hauled off to jail, or both. And sure enough, a police officer soon appeared. And he started to pace the counter back and forth. And he, as he walked back and forth, he started to pound his nightstick in his hand. But after he paced three times with his nightstick, I said to myself, we've got him. He really doesn't know what to do.
what is one of the best symbols of segregation? And that were the segregated lunch counters. Throughout the South, in places like Woolworths and Kresge's, there were lunch counters where whites could sit, but blacks could only stand and wait to be served. And so they thought that it would be important to actually bring people to the lunch counter, African Americans initially, to protest that. Now, the key was that while there had been other moments where there were earlier sit-ins and earlier boycotts, the truth is this is the first sit-in that gets national attention. And it really spawns a whole generation of student activism and sit-ins. And the goal of this movement was to bring students to sit in this lunch counter and basically not to do anything but just to ask to be served. And initially they sat down and they were ignored. Store was closed, they were let out. They came back the next day with more students and every day more and more and more. And the Woolworths people basically said, oh no, we're not going to desegregate. But after several months of ongoing pressure, the Woolworths people recognized that the key to their success to continue to get black businesses was to integrate this lunch counter. And what is amazing is that that idea began to spread throughout the South. And while the Greensboro sit-ins were occurring, suddenly there were sit-ins at Woolworths in Durham, in Goldsboro, it began to spread throughout the South. And by the time Woolworths, this counter, was integrated in July of 1960, there were over 4,000 sit-ins around the country. Most important one are nonviolent demonstrations based on ahimsa, which means nonviolence. And that principle that uh, uh, the prophet mentioned that people called Jesus Christ in Greek name, but his, his real name was Yeshua in his own mother tongue of Aramaic, Galilean Aramaic. And so uh, he is supported for what we read in the Bible a peaceful man. He was not a violent person. We are the teachers of Dr. King, Mahatma Gandhi, and many of the other people. And finally, they were pushed into war. A lot of them, they did not want war, but they were pushed into war. So the main problem is, is to try to deal with violence. So you may want to have a study on violence and nonviolence. How can we live together without harming or killing each other? Yeah. Ahimsa means, you know, ahimsa means pra to practice no violence in thought, word, and deed. That's simple. We're very proud of what happened 
Mm -hmm. I graduated from college in 63 along with Joseph. Uh, David was not able to complete at the time because he had a family he was working for. Franklin mm -hmm. was not for a while. He was ill. He took a toll on us emotionally, physically, spiritually. Uh, some students were beaten, as well as others were put in, thrown in jail. Some students were raped in prison, the women and men. Uh, those were in Mississippi and Alabama. They were treated just like high criminals. Yeah. They committed no crime. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was um, very inspirational. Many of my friends, I supported them. Um, and uh, many of them were injured, some permanently. Some were paralyzed with beating they took uh, in their head and their bodies, you know. Like, uh, uh, that's, that's what we're very proud of. We're very proud of others to pick up the mountain and continue it. We never gave up in Greensboro, but, you know, the movement has spread to other places, both north, south, east, and west. New York, Chicago, Los Angeles. All the states in this country we have support for the movement. Right? Because discrimination was everywhere in this country. to be remembered, number one, the first time in the history of the 20th century that African, Eurasian, American youth genetically, along with Caucasian youth and others, came together to remedy a disease called racism in our time. Mm -hmm. As limited as it was, there are many more, many more things in our society as it is controlled by European Americans and uh, having a capitalist economy for profit and having control of all the land of all the people who originally live here, there are many issues that still have to be resolved. So I'm doing this because I want your generation, our children and our grandchildren, to know that there is a way out of violence. Mm -hmm. We don't have to kill because we disagree with each other. We don't have to harm each other. We can't all live in peace, but we have, each generation has to make certain decisions to guarantee that you, your family, your children, your city, your state, your nation is going to be one where everybody is free to express themselves as long as they do not harm other people. Mm -hmm. 